Welcome to our Soul Sipping Sunday. This is the Bone and Marrow Podcast. And when we talk about things going on in the world during Soul Sipping Sunday, we like to make a biblical connection to our understanding of what we are hearing, seeing, experiencing. I'm Sophia. Who are you ladies? And I'm Joy. I'm Altria. <laughs> okay. And so we are the Bone and Marrow Podcast, reasoning together, rightly dividing the word of truth, sharing the revelations that God has given us on the matter. So I, guys, was listening to this woman who I actually watched some of her videos because I'm just kind of interested on how she is living this this weightless life. I don't know how to explain her journey, but she's really like out here doing whatever she feels like doing. Doesn't have a nine to five. She kind of just, you know, sailing through. She has a job. It's not a traditional nine to five. And so I saw this snippet of hers and I want to share it with y'all because I think it's interesting. I think it's worth discussing. The speaker is a global house sitter who travels the world caring for people's properties. That's what she's most known for. But something about her that is interesting is how eccentric she is about having a job and traveling the world. And I think she might even be a global citizen. I'm not sure, but I think I remember her saying that one time. So anyway, I'm going to play this clip, okay? (laughs) And then I want you ladies to chime in and talk about how you are deciphering what she's saying. First, from a sisterhood Black woman perspective, and if it's different, then from a Christian perspective, okay? Or whichever perspective y'all want to go from. I ju- I'm just interested to hear what everybody is thinking about this. Y'all ready? Yes. Yes, go ahead. She starts out by saying, I don't care about your purpose. That's the title of the clip. I don't care about your purpose. I don't care about your purpose. I don't care about your purpose. Live your dreams. I think black women have done enough operating within our purpose to the detriment of our own dreams. If you have a purpose in life, okay, but how your dreams do? If you don't know your purpose and you're struggling with that, change the question. Not what is my purpose? What are my dreams? Too many times, Black women get the message to be for others more than you are for yourself. Show up for others in a way that you don't show up for yourself. Sacrifice for yourself in order to pour into others. I've opted out. I've opted out. I wish I could do that for you too, right? (laughs) I think enough with your purpose. Live your dreams. Hey guys, that's it. All right. Let's get into it. I know that Atria has a plenty to say. One, I feel like a lot of what she's saying is so not biblical. Okay. And I'm going to find all my reference points when somebody else talks. I know from my Rolodex of biblical understanding, I am not the best at it, but baby, you are supposed to be long-suffering. You are supposed to sacrifice and do for others before you do for yourself. And I will find the exact scripture where it says that we are supposed to think highly of others before ourselves. Our whole reason for being is to serve other people, right? And then with this whole purpose thing and live your dreams, I got to find a scripture on that one because that really is not biblical. I just feel like she's coming from a self-serving kind of point of view i don't see anywhere in there that she does anything for anybody else other than for the pleasure of herself and follow your dream do they call it dreams and christian people call it purpose i don't know somebody else go let me find my bible verses (laughs) okay um okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna start with atria on some of this because i do think that we are supposed to be of service as Christians. Christ served, and I think we're all supposed to be walking behind his footsteps and being Christ-like. So when she says about like pouring into others, stop pouring into others, I don't agree with that. But I will tell you guys that as a black woman, as a black mother, okay, as a black family member, as a black friend, 
I'm going a little deep. I'm sorry. I got to tell you that a part of me understands why she is saying to like, just stop and just, you know, do what you, I hate to sound so carnal because Atria just really did do a good job of like saying that, you know, we don't need to, uh, this is not biblical, but do you, I mean, it's almost to me, the way I interpret it is almost borderline an argument for self-care. And I just really feel like women in general not just black women women just have to find their self in a lot of things that they are not finding their self in sometimes i could be speaking for myself not all women i mean maybe everybody ain't like that but a lot of times things that are happening around me is because i am constantly thinking about somebody else instead of just trying to even when it comes to my purpose or when it comes to my dreams instead of just going for the goal <laughs> i'm always like well this person is gonna do that and that it. and it's really annoying and i wish i had the forewithal to not do that i wish that, that was a part of my makeup sometime because it's annoying and it really is a distractor to get things done when you're like that when your mind is like all over the place like that in that regard i understand what she's saying i don't think people should not consider their purpose because i i feel like people have a purpose if whether the purpose is fulfilled during life or after they pass on and something some kind of domino effect happens i really feel like people do have a purpose so i don't think they should neglect that thought or that idea and i don't think that purpose and dream are the same but i do feel like we need balance and i feel like it's okay to have a little ambition as a christian woman and it's okay to uh be on the deep side as a black woman where you feel like why am i here when you're having like that existential thought that's not an absent thought like we we need to be have direction in that way so i don't know y'all like, i'm straddling the fence because i'm a black woman who feels like she's always <laughs> looking out for everybody else I I don't feel 100% like Atria, but I do understand why she is saying, well, that's not biblical. Because I feel like as humans, we are to serve. But culturally and societally, Black women are, we're always serving. And sometimes it is at the detriment of us getting what we want or being who we want to be or just getting through stuff. You know, that's where I'm at. <laughs> I'm straddling the fence with this one. <laughs> Archer, did you find your research? Did you Joy looks lost. <laughs> Okay. Did you find your research, Atria? Or did you find a deeper... Atria, are you on mute? I was on mute. <laughs> okay. Give me a sec. Go ahead, Joy. <laughs> oh, you still you still look in my bed. I don't have nothing to say. I, oh, here's, don't to say. Uh, I don't feel that I really have anything deep to say concerning this. I, the first thing that I think I'm seeing here is that this woman, although she may be very serious and means what she is saying, I do feel like this is a, this was either recorded if it was just that snippet or it was that snippet was pulled out, edited down to this clip for the purpose of what we're doing right now, right? Like it's to jab a person into thought, mm -hmm. you know, like I want to use the term clickbait, but I don't want to use clickbait. But what I'm saying Rhetorical. is that I don't think that she fully really means, 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 means at face value what she's saying. I think it's doing what some people out here do, which is just they they push out a form of content in order to go viral. Right. And I don't, I'm not saying, ma'am, I'm not saying that about you, but I feel like that's, <laughs> that's the spirit that made this come forth. Now, I agree. One has to care for themselves just in the purest sense of what that means, right? You have to shower your body. You have to brush your 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 teeth and your tongue. Mm -mm. Top of your mouth too. Roof of the mouth. Floss. You have to take the Q-tip and go in there and pull out the wax. Men and women, you get your hair done. You wash it. 
you you file your toenails. I mean, just in the purest sense of what it means to care for self, right? And if you call that little bit selfish, then I don't think that's the proper term. I'm simply implying here self-care. And I do believe that before you can really be intentional about caring for somebody else, you must care for yourself. Because the word does say that we are to treat others the way that we want to be treated. So how can we go truly pour ourselves into someone else and call that loving someone if we haven't given that same type of love to ourselves? How can we do that? So you learn, in essence, I would think, how to care for someone else because you care for you. I'm not giving somebody something that I don't have because I can't do that. One gives out of their abundance to give. You cannot give what you don't have. So if you don't have love or you can't give love, that's probably you don't love yourself. You can't love someone else if you don't love yourself. So that's the first thing I would say. Now, she keeps saying she doesn't care about purpose. I would have to hear what she defines that as to really even start participating with her in a debate. Because right now I have nothing to say to her regarding her not caring about purpose. What she defines as purpose, I may not even care about that. I don't know what she considers purpose. So she doesn't care about it. Okay, she doesn't care about it. What she cares about, here's what I wrote, enough about your purpose, live your dreams. She wants you to live your dreams. Now, I think in the basic sense, what one might interpret as dreams, she might mean it this way, she might not, is like, what have you always wanted to be when you grow up? What do you want to, I dream of getting on a boat for 12 weeks and just never coming back. I dream of, you know, all this stuff. If that's what's defined as dreams, like dreaming with no intention, right? Because even with a dream, there's purpose behind that. So really even saying enough about your purpose, live your dreams, not a well thought out statement. Like it's really clickbait. Okay. (laughs) Even with one's wildest dream, there is purpose behind that. If I want to get on a boat and I want to be on that boat for 12 weeks and I never want to come back, it's probably because I'm tired and I need a rest. So my purpose is to take a rest or I want to get away from everything that I've always seen. There is intention even behind that. Purpose is intention. So even what she's saying, she does care about purpose. Now let's get into a deeper meaning of dreaming, like literal dreaming. God speaks to us. He gives us instruction in dreams. So essentially, yeah, I do want you to live your dreams because I want you to probe those dreams when God is speaking to you and figure out the deep sayings, the deep, dark sayings that he's communicating in your dreams. He's warning you. He's protecting you. He's directing you. He's advising you. He's he's talking to you about the plans that he has for you, which is why he created you. So I concur. I, too, want y'all to live y'all dreams. But I want you to confer with God on what those dreams are actually meaning. And in those dreams, you will find purpose. And I agree with Joy when she says that this is clickbait. It it, it really is. Because one, everything (laughs) about her. Maybe we should, um, what is it called? Maybe we should watch the things before we have shared them. Jesus. Well, no, I mean, I, hey. Come on, she done stirred our souls on this Sunday. So come on, Ooh, we I'm stirred. Sorry, um, soul sipping. Oh. <laughs> As she sip her water. Um, Philippians 2 and 3, the first line of this says, do nothing out of selfish ambition mm-hmm. or vain conceit, mm-hmm. rather in humility value others above yourselves not looking to your own interests but each of you to the interests of others yeah. Philippians 2 3 through 4 basically debunks her entire rant mm-hmm. for those of you who are looking to use the bible as a point of reference for how to conduct your life, how to conduct your mindset, how to live, because nothing about what she said 
was even remotely close to being godly because yes she said don't worry about your purpose and leave your dreams and i i agree with joy where your dreams is, is is a way that god communicates with you so inadvertently you do want to obey the instructions and things of that nature but i would have to disagree and say that ain't what she was talking about because she clearly comes off in my opinion from a point of she tired of doing for everybody else and it's all about me but that's not how as christians we're supposed to be and i do agree sophia that you are supposed to have self-care you're all supposed to take care of yourself but however i don't condone using self-care as an excuse to be selfish that's what I don't condone because it's time and a place for everything. He will not allow you to be exhausted to the point that you can't care for yourself. Meaning he will carve time for you to get rest, carve time for you to be satiated, carve time for you to have mental breaks, carve times out for you to, you know, be with like people so you can refresh and rejuvenate. So, okay, you get somebody who lukewarm, who really don't know nothing about what it means to be philippians 2 3 and 4 and then they hear something like this they already confused they already don't know what to do and then they latch onto this unorganized okay. rant and they latch onto it and then think this is the gospel and then later on down the road they learn that ain't the gospel now they mad because they listen to it that's the only reason why I say I totally disagree with what she's saying. It is nothing remotely biblical because she automatically comes out the gate talking about, I don't care about your purpose. Okay, ma'am, I'm offended because my purpose is to be like Jesus. My dream is to be like Jesus. And that's the thing. I think a lot of times people do get overwhelmed because we ain't taking it to the person who can give us rest. When they should have said, okay, Lord... I need help. I'm tired. Give me, give me, give me a little bit of rest. Give me a little bit of reprieve. You get what I'm saying? So I too, I get what you're saying, Sophia. But at the same time, if we busy trying to carry the burden when we're supposed to give that, give our burden to him and then help others, if we lay our burden at his feet, we ain't got to be worried about being tired or not having rest or not being able to go on or not being able to have enough me time and self-care and stuff like that we were stressed out like that because we're not doing what he told us to do what did I, he tell my us opinion to my <laughs> opinion people are not just busy doing stuff in the world sometimes people are over run down doing stuff for the church so we but have to is be that, but are they there every time the church door open doing it because that's what was placed in their heart and their spirit or are they doing it for show Okay, sometimes when people, it's in their heart to serve, to do what's asked of them, but sometimes they're the go-to person. But it, there is sometimes a matter of, you need to say no. Like, even if it's for the, the, the church, you need to say no. But I think like some people, one, they appreciate being asked, like they appreciate how they're perceived for being asked. And then two, I think people just really don't want to be, don't want to let the church down. It's not really, sometimes it's not a selfish thing because if it were selfish and they were tired, they would just say, I can't, I'm tired. So it, sometimes it really is just being the go-to person in that space and just wanting to make sure that you are doing what is asked of you that you're being present you know and 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 that's what i think i don't i don't think it's always like a oh i want people to be like oh she did it she showed up no it's not especially in a church setting most of the time i don't think it is and i'm gonna just be real with you because i all the churches that i went to for the majority of my life were family churches we all know Family churches rely on specific people for specific stuff all the time. It's like they can't ever ask another person but to why? Go why? And do something Because they, they know that person what ain't gonna tell them no, and then that's right. not they're not doing it because then now they feel obligated to do it because they don't want to disappoint that person. And then again, you got your priorities out of order. You got your priorities out of order and they only go to that person because they know they're not going to get a no. And then that means that they are abusing 
and misusing something that could be so much more fruitful if 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 someone else had an opportunity to ask and and co-partner with that person not just throw it all on them because you know that person ain't gonna tell you no why because either it's an aunt it's a cousin it's a sister it's a brother that ain't right either and then now that person is bogged down with being obligated because they don't want to disappoint who versus saying you know what i'm gonna righteously tell you no on that one and walk away with a clear conscience because god didn't tell them to do that and i don't agree with everybody so god told me to god told me to ask you sister no god ain't tell 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 you to ask me God did do not you tell feel, you that. Atria, do you feel like it's selfish for a person to be thinking in that vein? Like, um, I don't want to let them down. Like, do you feel like that's the selfish aspect of it all? Like when I they're guess. like, I don't want to let this person down because they asked me again or a- asked and I'm tired. Do you think that that's a portion of the selfishness because they're thinking about how they're going to be perceived? I'm going to answer that with this this small story, and I promise I'm going to make it quick. Um, my music director said it to me like this. You, don't, you only don't tell them no because they church people. And he said, you put church people up on a pedestal because they, what, church people? He said, you know what? It ain't nothing wrong with that. It ain't nothing wrong with that. But he said, you got to go into being comfortable with even telling church people no. It happened. I was going through a season of what I was telling everybody no. That lady stood and it stood and looked me in my face and told me I don't like the new Altria. And I asked her why, because the old Altria would have told you yes. Her whole demeanor changed. And I saw on her face when I said that the revelation of the revelation I came to, that you're only asking me because you knew I would say yes, because you because you're asking me, you think I'm not gonna tell you no. That was the most just free liberating, liberating Empowering, thing. Yeah. When I realized I don't have to say yes, so I will answer the second part. Yes, because I didn't want to be perceived by church people as the person who is not willing to serve, the person who is not willing to be selfless, the person who is not willing to do what God told me to ask you to do. So that's why I'm only saying it from the perspective of what I went through. Yes, I was that person. I used to be a people pleaser, a big people pleaser. And once I got free from that, it was, it ain't, nobody can make me feel guilty about my no. The only person that can make me feel guilty about my no is if I allow the enemy to make me feel guilty about my no. It's liberating. I'm not saying, oh, go out there and tell everybody, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm not saying that. It's a, it's a discernment that comes with that, too. And I used to tell people, oh, I'll pray about it, and never did. I stopped doing that. I actually started praying about it. God, this person asked me to do something. I don't feel like you told them to do it because you would have put it in my spirit. You would have dropped it in my spirit. Hey, go do so-and-so for that person. And they wouldn't even have to ask me why because it would be in my spirit already. And I would go to them and say, hey, I'm going to do this for you. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Hey, do you need so-and-so and so-and-so? Okay, I got you. So again, my own personal opinion of said matter. Joy? You, you keep calling on me. You're so I'm sorry. I'm, I'm you're so intentional <laughs> about getting me involved in this here conversation. I think this lady just really doesn't require this type of What's the attention. word? What's the word? Discussion. Not even attention. Discussion. No. Yeah. <laughs> but here's, okay. Yes, no is an acceptable answer. And I am at a point and have long since been at this point that I don't allow people to question my no. Because when you ask of me, I have just as much right to say no as I do to say yes. And when you say yes, no one ever questions, why did you say yes? But they question your no. So I've gotten to the point where I don't allow people to question my no. Okay, also too, I think that, Sophia, when you were talking about like serving and particularly in church. So I think if a person wants to serve, it is okay. And they should go and say, hey, I would like to do this or just jump in there. But then 
I have been in the situation where I actually stepped out in church and I was like, I want to get more involved. I want to connect. I want to get more involved. I want to start exploring what my opportunities are to serve at church. And I did that. I went through some classes to learn some specific things. I I remember someone approaching me and saying, you know, you look like you would be really good, you know, right here and, and, you know, like we need you now kind of a thing. And I really wanted to do it. Like everything in me felt like giddy. I was like, yay, God, you know, I get to serve because I wanted to serve, wanted to be in service. And I had to say no, even though I wanted to do it because it was out of sync with what was going on in my home at the time. And so, you know, we look at service as an outward thing, doing for people as an outward thing, but a lot of, but service starts in your home, especially when you are a spouse, you are a husband, you are a wife. And then if you are a parent, you are a mother, you are a father. If you are outside of your home, doing all of this and doing all of that, and your family in your home mm. is neglected, mm. then you are not, you are not doing the any good. Guy. Right. I mean, right. Yeah. Because that's your first ministry of service. Your house, yeah. So if, if, if the kids are like, man, you know, mom, dad, you don't ever spend any time with us. And you're always up there at your, your girls meeting. Okay. Cause I don't want to attack the church because people volunteer for a lot of church. You always, you always with your sorrows or your frat boys, you always on the golf course, you always out there taking hot yoga and, and the kids aren't getting any time with you. You're out of order. You got some things you need to say no to. If the husband or the wife is like, hey, hey, I thought we'd get some time and you're out there, quote unquote, serving, you're out of order. I mean, you know, in balance, of course, because sometimes things may flare up just because and you and you're and you assess it, you're like, man, I'm not neglecting my home. You know, everything's in order, but they're still flaring up. Then, you know, maybe maybe right like there's just some other things going on in the atmosphere but for the most part you know i don't even know does this even align with purpose and dreams we're on a different route we're sipping on something different right now but that's the point what do they say like um everything in in moderation right but you really do have to assess what your balance are you balancing What you watching tree, on TV? What you got? Go deep, Tree. Oh no. Oh, that's that's just lifetime in the background, girl. You know I love me some lifetime. <laughs> yeah, movies and mysteries. No, I'm just I know I I I agree, but I just don't want to negate um so how what Sophia was saying. So Sophia, did I answer your question? You did because the anecdote that you gave, I think, answered it. Um, about somebody from your church saying, Well, you only saying yeah because church people are asking you and like right, that, that, that is a little bit, mm-hmm. with family asking you that could go right. the same way and there's a little bit of ego to that i didn't think about it like that but there is ego to feeling like the person that everybody can go to especially when you know you can't handle it it's, it's a lot for you but you're still constantly you know showing up for people i think the way we show up for ourselves is by spending time with God Mm -hmm. if you don't have a husband or a significant other that looks out for you because you're looking out for them I'm sorry back that up if you don't have a significant other that that focuses on God and then focuses on you and then focus on himself and you're focusing on God focusing on him and focusing on yourself if you don't have that balance then we are supposed to do as Joy said singularly we're supposed to focus on God then we're supposed to focus on um, our family, our house, whatever kind of situation that looks like. And then we're supposed to focus on ourselves. So whether it's done with a partner or not, the order does not change. It's always God, others, and then ourselves. 
are we supposed to do it to the max? And you know, like how Joyce every time something out there, you out there in hot yoga and and you know with frets and sisters and all this other stuff. No, by spending time with God, getting into that quiet place, whether you can spare because you work a full time job and you got kids and all this other stuff, whether you can spare three to five minutes or not, maybe ten or fifteen minutes, or throughout your day you are finding time to reflect on Him bring him into the equation you're focusing on god and he then extends what seems like oh i only got 15 minutes he extends that time to where it feels like you're able to accomplish you're able to do and you still got a chance to just to yourself i I think it's when we neglect to include our focus on him first that's when we feel like we get run down and ran over and so overwhelmed with everything because we're forgetting the key part of the whole puzzle we we only remember him when when our back is against the wall and we just about to tap out that's when we remember him and that's why we get overwhelmed and that's why we're exhausted and then that's when it turns into oh it's all about me forget y'all focus on me yeah because you took out the person who can cover you and everybody else but where does personal ambition fit in with all of that like you know, like I sometimes when I'm when I watch a board ceremony, sometimes people will say something like, "Man, I worked really hard to get here." Or like if I'm watching people in an interview, they talk about like how they sacrificed a lot of um, time or like just fun time to to be the discipline that they are. So I, I mean, I know this is a a, a very uh, anti atria question, but just think about it for a little bit. Not anti atria because I know that everything you're saying is biblical, but I just don't want to say anti biblical. Okay. So, oh gosh. But, oh, okay. but um, just like uh, like where do we fit personal ambition in that? Or maybe it's just, maybe it just, it's important that you're, you're ambitious about your purpose in Christ, I guess, because what you were just saying, like, instead of being, like, for example, go ahead, Joy. No, go ahead. Say what you're I was going to say, for example, um, if I, if my personal ambition is to start a theater company, does my purpose within that ambition has to have to revolve around Christ and getting the word out about Christ or um, having a Christ-centered company or having Christ-centered uh, uh, sh- uh, shows? Like, or or is it more like... Are they like two different things? Like, can I just be ambitiously wanting to be um, the founder of a theater company and (laughs) somewhere else uh, focusing on Christ, but not feeling like they need to be uh, conjoined? Although, Atria, I feel like your whole premise all the time, every time we talk, is that your life should revolve around Christ. But... um, I guess I'm just asking it to see your thoughts about like uh, about people who are kind of like not uh, not combining all the things in their lives. There's kind of they're kind of like in boxes, separate, you know, then they'll never be a whole or complete person if they consider themselves a Christian. Because every facet of our life is supposed to be Christ-centered. There is no area in your life that should be void of Christ being the center. It's nothing wrong with having desires and uh, and having aspirations to do things. I am not saying that at all. Because every facet of our life is supposed to be Christ-centered. He puts certain things in us. He plants certain desires and wants and dreams for us because there is no area in your life that should be void of Christ being the center. Yeah. Again, Tree, my you're opinion. such an unwavering rock. And that's a good thing. I meet you here. Um, I agree that I don't... I, 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 I would be pressed to find how one who has Christ within them can be in any space 
And Christ is not in that space because he's within you. So wherever you go, he's there. And at some point, he going to come out, right? Like, he's just going to start spilling out all over the place because, <laughs> no, because you can't contain him. You know, you can't contain him. So I, I, having ambition is not a bad thing. We should want to see ourselves further tomorrow than we are today. But I think like Atria is saying, all ambition still goes through the Holy Spirit. Because even as we are taking steps, we're prayerful along the walk. And when we get to places that we have aspired to be, we don't forget that it is the Lord who got us there. And then the way that we function once we get in the door is should be indicative of the, the leading of Christ who's within us. The leading of the Holy Spirit that got us there and now is saying, now do this, now do that. Now look here, now look there. So, and Sophia, I'm going to speak this directly because I don't know if it, 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 it felt like this might be something that you're grappling with, right? Especially when you started talking about like, uh, if I have this ambition to do a certain thing and using theater company as a example, do I have to explicitly say, does it have to be, be developed this way uh, that says Christ is at the center of this thing? I'm going to say no, but I'm going to say with that no, that I don't think that anybody can come across you being in that thing and not know that you come in the service of Jesus. Now, if, now, if you get there and this cannot be seen, then you got, there's a problem with the fruit. There's a problem with the fruit. I mean, but do you have to call it Holy Ghost Productions? Okay, no, I'm no, I'm so just saying, no, I'm you don't. You so don't. <laughs> Does everything you do have to say, you know, uh, Jesus is Lord in order for you to put it forth? No, it doesn't. But you are still in service to him. He's still in you. And by the time people finish dealing with you, they're going to know that you proclaim Jesus as Lord. Now, if nothing about the way that you love and serve people, even through your company, speaks of Jesus, then we have a Sophia problem. That's, that's all I would say. And that is to anybody else, even who's listening. If you are a child of God and you are in business and nothing about the way that you do business or the way that you show up in the room or the way that you service clients mm. speaks of, testifies of Christ, then you, you're having it's, 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 the fruit, the fruit is strange fruit. The fruit is strange. Okay, I realized I answered him that so wrong. Put, puts ahead, him Joy. under a uh, under a bushel. Remember the the word talks about that. You you can't have him and not proclaim it. And that doesn't always mean that I'm going out there and evangelizing people. That could mean that maybe I do. You know, God calls me to speak to a client, and who knows? I'm actually speaking to his or her issue that they've mm -hmm. told no one. I'm a soft place for somebody to land. I go above mm. and beyond in the way that I do my work. And they see that and notice that nobody's ever come in. I remember this one time I was, I, I was working with this company and I, I, I was braiding hair. I would just, I would just say it like that. I was braiding hair, but I was, but I was stationed somewhere where the owner was not, I was working for someone else. And I was, I, I was put in a place where the owner was not. And so that means that I handled all her money that came in. I handled whatever tips that I made and reported those tips. 
And anything that was awry when, when, when things needed ordering, I was responsible for forwarding that information to her. I was not the first person who worked for her in that capacity, but anybody who worked for her only ever worked one at a time in, in their own season. So I'm saying that to say that this woman eventually came to me and said, you are, no, nobody that I've had before you has ever made as much money as you have made. Mm. And I don't think she realized, but what I realized And this may have been like God just revealing this thing to me. But what I realized, it wasn't that it probably wasn't that I had made so much more money than anybody else because money was coming. was poor. I mean, people was regularly just throwing the money. Just take the money. Take the money. (laughs) I didn't even add it. All I had to do to make money was just show up. But I reported all of the money. It was a cash business. So imagine how easily people who were there before me could just run away with the money. But Jesus is within me. So I'm not going to just run away with nobody's money. I reported every dime of the money. And so what she was able to start to see, which she wasn't able to see beforehand, was every single penny that her business was Mm. making Mm. that's the holy spirit saying this girl is doing something different for you than anybody else has ever done it so now i look like the highest earner in the history of her business Mm. just because the way that the lord worked within me the way that my care he he developed character within me and then that character showed up on the job now she may never know It's Jesus. It's Jesus. But she knew enough to say something's different about the way that you earn when I send you out there than the way that everybody else earns when I send Mm. them out there. So so that's what I mean. Like there's got to be something that shows up and testifies of you in the room and the fact that Jesus is within you. Now, if that's not happening, then there, there there's a character issue. I digress. Sophia, I apologize because I so missed the question that you were asking. No, you were you were, I, you were saying the right thing. I was, oh, okay, that made and sense I do. To me too. I do agree with Joy saying no. Everything doesn't have to say, but who who <laughs> you are theater. and right. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope that's not what I was saying because I, that's not what I was trying to say. I was just trying to say exactly what Joy said. That's why you need more than one person because Joy broke that thing down. Joy, I don't like you. Just, just know that. <laughs> that doesn't mean I don't like you. I know. It, it, okay. it means I, I'm like, when you started talking, I'm like, Lord, God darn Joy. <sighs> I'm over here writing stuff down. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! Take a note. Y'all, I'm sorry. I I really know. I, we ain't bring that lady up no more. So clearly, she was a, a she was momentarily. You know, I wanted to say this as a lady. Prompt. She was just a prompt. It was oh, oh, okay. You know? yeah. There's not enough background to the context of why she's saying what she's saying. That and that I, and that's why I'm calling it. So, ma'am, if you listen to this, I'm not trying to bash you. That that's why I'm calling it clickbait. I don't have. In, it's just it's not enough con- it's not wrapped in there's no before there's no how she got there there's no what propelled her to leave her job you know like a like a, a traditional job i should say right. and then go into this non-traditional thing which i i bless her life i mean who wouldn't want to travel and that's how they survive and live but then to come back with with the statements of like Atria was saying that you could be a stumbling block for someone else in the way that you're presenting this with no context. So, because what led her to this was her own personal experiences and probably like we've discovered and talked here today is the no, there was not enough no to other people, which thereby led her to tire out, exhaust, and then say, bump this purpose that I've, that I've been chasing in my, in the power and strength of myself, I'm living my dreams. 
Now you're now that's being preached to other people in error. Hold on, I got a joke. So, ma'am, and I'm just trying to be funny. Your dream is to live from pillar to post. <laughs> I mean, she's actually, she actually is having a really good life, I must I mean, say. No, my, no, 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 no. no you all like nine to five in and like. You, you your, your like, dream is to live feel of the post. <laughs> I don't know. Some people like that. Some people like being rooted and then some people like just being citizens of the world. I don't know. think that she's, do I, I think that she's, that she's probably living more of a, a Christ-like life than most of us nine to fivers in that, mm. you know, uh, he, he did say the son of man have no, have no home. Right. And yet you want to follow me, but yet I have nowhere to lay my head. We are supposed to be out there in, into the greater of the world and mm-hmm. taking the gospel and taking the word and, you know, right. So Sorry, I ma'am. don't think there's anything <laughs> wrong with the way Sorry that she's that living, but how she got there i don't think in at least in that clip because i'm i'm quite sure in some clips sorry she, she may have talked about how she's gotten there right sorry it's to just that the lady, context i think she left corporate america to do this like she she was on a journey of like pro- we know in corporate america we probably can't always say no especially when they're paying you good so i don't know but i think she left corporate america to i've do said this. my chef no and would again <laughs> and would again the answer is well, no you know people feel like that like when they're making a certain amount I don't, like I don't. the I answer is no <laughs> well she said no too because she quit so I'm with but... you. Nah, I ain't gonna be able to do that I ain't gonna be able to do that I ain't gonna be able to do that I'm not doing it yeah that'll be a no sorry to that lady she might, she might be out there preaching the word of God, ma'am. I ain't mean to to take a stab at your pillow to post. But, uh, she, I'm just saying, like <laughs> this has been soul sipping Sundays. The only man. I'm Joy. I'm Sophia. I'm Atria. <laughs> and this is Bone and Marrow. Somebody gonna pray us out. Self pray. Okay, our Father who art in heaven, sure, yes. thank you for this session. Thank you, God. Um, we just appreciate you being present in some of the most complex and unique conversations that we can have as Christian women. And uh, we just thank you for grace. We thank you for understanding. We thank you for resolve and resolution upon your word. And we thank you for... Um, just uh, allowing us to gather as two or more and acknowledge who you are and give you praise and challenge, you know, throw out some challenges for people whose perspectives and ears and thoughts may be going in different directions. Um, We ask that you continue to make this podcast something that serves you, that uplifts you, and that um spiritually educates listeners we love you we lift your name up in jesus name i pray amen amen amen